that died on the streets of the Lower East Side. It would take me an hour to go over them. Uh, I'm going to start out by saying I remember a long time ago, back in the 80s, when NYU was going to put up their first dorm in what we call the Lower East Side. Now, the, once the real estate developers came in, it became the East Village. There were a small group of housing activists that said, this isn't a really good thing. We need to stop it. They saw the future. Now, they actually climbed over a fence and got arrested. I didn't go with them because I didn't really realize um, where it was going to go from there. They were visionaries. I should have seen it coming, but I didn't really know. Since that time, NYU has taken over quite a lot of property, both in the East and the West Village, but mostly in the East Village, it's been dormitory property. And the dormitories have deposited, deposited large numbers of NYU students on the neighborhood who are not part of the community. They don't plan on being part of the community. One thing that you'll notice is that whenever NYU puts up a dorm, the whole area around that dorm rapidly gentrifies. NYU was a pioneer in promoting gentrification in the Lower East Side. Cheap, cheap real estate. They figured out it was a great money-making business for the university. Why have their students go and rent apartments from private landlords when NYU could become the landlord themselves? Now, what has NYU put back into the neighborhood? Can anybody here name one thing other than, let's, let's face it, the, the kids that go to NYU are privileged. They committed suicide. Their parents have, have a lot of money. You can't go to this school without a lot of money. And as I've said before, NYU discriminates. You don't see any of the people that live in the projects on the Lower East Side getting scholarships and going to NYU. If you look at the demographics here, it's mostly all white and Asian. It, it doesn't represent New York City. NYU is now expanding all over into the West Village, and they have some of the more upscale people, including movie stars, are protesting against it because now they're trying to take away some pocket parks. And to his credit, Henry Stern, who was park commissioner during the Thompson Square Park uprising, went and testified against NYU in court the other day. Now, NYU has got a big publicity problem now. So do NYU students. Because of what the university is doing, People are going, oh, those NYU students, man, I don't like them. I don't want them in my neighborhood. They're part of it. They're part of it. And they are. And unfortunately, they don't realize it or care about it, but that's why I'm going to be camping out here for a month. So maybe some of them will come and talk to me about it. Now, as many of you know, I have a photo archive in Tamman Library here at NYU. of a lot of the stuff that happened on the Lower East Side. And... That's going to maybe make it harder for them to arrest me when I'm sleeping in a sleeping bag right in front of the library. But I feel somebody's got to do this. Now, you know, the federal cuts came, came into effect today. That's going to affect public housing money here. That's going to affect schools. That's going to affect a lot of things. Homelessness statistics are back on the rise again. Mayor Bloomberg don't care. Mayor Bloomberg and Giuliani's goal was to get rid of the middle class and the poor people out of Manhattan, bring in people with money, make the properties a lot more valuable for their friends, and they didn't really care about the working class and the poor. They just don't care. An example of this is Recently, it's been brought to the public's attention that it's becoming harder and harder for families who become homeless to get into the shelter system. A scandal which recently reported in the newspapers is that when temperatures are, uh, reach a certain degree on the street, the police are actually supposed to go and take people off the street 
and put them into shelters. The shelters have been now putting homeless families back on the street in sub-zero degree temperatures and telling them to go sleep in the subway. Bloomberg is leaving a legacy of rising homelessness, a lack of concern for it, less money for it, and that's where NYU comes in. Now, I think NYU needs to put something back. I think they really owe it to the, to the Lower East Side to do something. Now, there just happens to be a historical abandoned building on the Lower East Side called Charles. Rudy Giuliani did not like the radical Puerto Rican people that were running Charles. Armando Perez and Chino Garcia because they weren't down with Rudy Giuliani. They were down with the people. That was actually a squatted building. It was turned into a vibrant community center. There was 50 to 100 groups doing everything from dance pro uh, programs to art classes. I even photographed a, a Latin Kings meeting there for the New York Times. They were trying to help the Latin King kids get out of crime and become positive citizens. They loved the neighborhood. They sold that building to a private developer, Greg Singer. Which is that? Now, because Singer agreed to certain stipulations on how that building could be used when he bought the building, and because nobody trusts him and nobody likes him, he's been unable to uh, rent that building. It's deteriorating. Someone told me that people have gone in there and stripped out every bit of plumbing and anything worthwhile and already sold it out of that building. It's just falling apart. It's sitting there. So my proposal is, is that NYU get together with Rosie Mendez and former council member Margarita Lopez, who is number three with Housing Preservation and Development, and come up with a plan to rebuild that building and turn it into housing for homeless and low-income people. Now, this would be an NYU's benefit. They need some good publicity. It would also help the students. NYU has students that are dentists, doctors, social workers, teachers. It could be a training ground. It could be a volunteer center for students. They could set up a dental and a medical clinic there. They could make the ground floor another community center, house people in the building. It could become a model program for universities around the country who are doing exactly the same thing NYU is doing. Same thing's happening at Columbia. People are complaining about it and angry about the expansion of Columbia. Part of the reason is, is that the universities don't see themselves as part of the community. They see their goal is to make money and convince their students that if they can take out, you know, $100,000, $200,000 in loans, they're going to get a good job and be able to pay that back and become part of the 1%. Now, part of what I think a college education should be is, yes, training that you can use to get a job, but also training in how you can make the world a better place for everybody. Yo. Somehow that's Yo, gotten lost awesome. in the university system, especially with this one, because, uh, let's face it, I mean, the kids that go here come from wealthy families. They, they give out, they don't give out a lot of scholarships. They can do this no, and it would be actually to their best advantage. It would be great publicity for them. And I'm not saying I support them doing that in order that they can continue their um, massive uh, assault on this neighborhood. I mean, Henry Sturr was even complaining they're trying to take over city-owned private park space for their program and if they had a, they have a backroom deal with Bloomberg to do this. I'm not supporting that. Now if you read the last week's uh, cover story in the Village Voice, they say there's an internal rebellion here at NYU against the expansion. Well we want them to join us. I want the students to join us. I think the students need to wake up here. Now, what kind of a world are they going to go into now with all of these cutbacks, with them owing all this money and student loans? 
they need to be part of the world, part of the community, not just separated by their attendance here at NYU. And I've met a lot of good kids here. Believe it or not, one of the sympathetic journalism teachers paid me $100 to lecture one of their journalism classes before I left New York, which bought me a bus ticket out of town. And I'm really thankful for that. So they're kind of, um, I think we have allies here. I think we have enemies here. But I think that um, I'm out here, going to stay here. You see my sleeping bag? I'm staying here for a while. I don't know. They may have me arrested. Thank God my buddy Norman Siegel, who used to be the American Civil Liberties director, said, John, they arrest you. Just give me the call. I'll try to get you out of jail again. <laughs> if it happens, it happens. Watch out for provocateurs. I don't worry about provocateurs. I am a provocateur. We're not provocateurs. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I want to thank you all for coming out here because this is, other than what Frank's done with Picture of the Homeless, the biggest pro-housing demonstration that's been in New York in as long as I can remember. And unfortunately, I see a lack of LES squatters at this protest. There are some here. They should all be over here. Unfortunately, it just goes to show you, when people get ownership of property and become legal, they kind of go, okay, I got mine. I'm going to forget about the rest of you. And I want to also thank C-Squat and Frank, the, the two squatters that actually have taken me in off the street when they've seen me homeless down here, even though my photos and the propaganda I got out about the squatter movement helped with that whole legalization campaign. I don't know how many people told me the photos of the tank on 13th Street changed the equation with that, but I'm kind of disgusted because one thing I noticed is the Lori squatters will throw a bunch of art shows about real estate and put up all kinds of propaganda about real estate, but that's it. That's a little party. That's fun. They get to promote themselves and their artwork, but why aren't they here? Why aren't they doing anything more to help the housing movement? I want them to get back involved. It's a shame that they got theirs and they quit. Yep. I'm glad they got theirs. I'm not, I don't want to make no mistake about that. But we have to revitalize the housing movement in New York because people are going to die. I'm a vet. One in three uh, homeless people in America are veterans. It's going to get worse. With all these cutbacks, they're going to cut back on veteran services, housing, health care, everything. And if you think that they let this happen by accident. They did it. They want to go, okay, look, people, this is what we can do to you. So this is what we can do to you. So, hey, we're going to maybe bring you back in, pay you less money. Uh, we're going to cut back on all these programs, but at least we're going to keep them going. That's what this whole scam is about. Now let's get to Bloomberg. <laughs> you know, Bloomberg is the biggest fucking asshole that ever got elected next to Rudy Giuliani <laughs> as mayor of New York City. Evil. He's for the rich. He cares only about the rich. He makes private deals with NYU to give away city parks. He's let the homeless situation go back, start going back to where it was before. 1983 level. 1983 level. You read all the statistics. Everybody's complaining about it. Bloomberg's going to go out with a legacy of leaving a big problem for the next mayor of New York because homeless people are going to be back on the streets again like they were before. There's already stories now, and the um, DNA Info just ran a story yesterday. Homeless people assault people at coffee shops in West Village. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to know the statistics may be going back up if those stories are starting to reappear in in the press. Propaganda. Now, I don't know if anybody wants to accompany me, but we have invite, been invited by the director to pay a visit up to Tamament. We can go up there and you can see the library. If, uh, and John, we have a, a, a rent reform person here. I think somebody should talk. About, you should let him talk. All right, sure. Come on up. Come on up. All right.